Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video and I have a special one for you today. I'm sure a lot of you recognize this car if you're familiar with the GR Yaris's in the UK. This is Chris's car and it is an absolute beast. Pretty much everything that you can possibly change on this car has been changed. And I'm very, very much so looking forward to experiencing it. I've been in talks with Chris for a long time. He can't stop modifying the thing as we will find out in a minute when we introduce him. But it's recently had a bit of an overhaul. We've got a sequential in the car. We've now got a hybrid turbo running around 400 brake, which is pretty incredible for a GR Yaris. In usual fashion, we'll introduce you to Chris and then we're gonna go out and experience this sequential 400 brake GR Yaris. I mean, look at this thing. From every single angle, this thing looks absolutely wild. Look at that rear wing, absolutely insane. But before we do introduce you to Chris and have a walk around, I do have something pretty cool to show you. This video has been sponsored by EA Sports WRC, and we're gonna dive straight into this. Check this out. I mean, no, this is not real life footage. This is essentially the virtual equivalent of Chris's GR Yaris. Visually, it looks pretty much the same, and I imagine it's gonna be just as much of a handful, if not more, let's be honest. Sorry, Chris, because this is, of course, the fully fledged WRC car, the car which Chris has kind of replicated into road form, which of course we are filming today. Now, EA Sports WRC, RC boasts a ton of different features and I'm sure in this we're only going to scratch the surface but I'm quite excited to see what this thing is all about because I can't drive the real life car but I can drive this one. So we're in Sweden, obviously a lot of snow on the ground is going to be very very slippy. I'm going to give this a go. Chris if you're watching you're probably going to be thankful that I'm not driving your car today. Start to 30, three right. Good luck. How cool is this? All right, Five, right to go. We've got a sequential in list. Three, like what we've got. Two, one, Chris's car. Go on, 30. And we're away. Three right, open to the crest. And in. And three left, 40. Three right short. Don't Whoa. cut. 120. As I would imagine, crest, very, right very slippy. Into crest, the four right opens, 160. <laughs> this is open. 50, make four right, half long. I'm 40 seconds down, that's not good. Into that's crest, really 80. not good. <laughs> crest, this car is epic though. Right, I'm going to need to get it somewhere where there's a little bit more grip, I think. Tightened. Somewhere where it's and three a little right. bit easier to drive, because it's an absolute handful. <laughs> <laughs> WRC 2023 is, pardon the pun, built from the dirt up, quite literally. By far the most immersive and realistic rally orientated game I have ever experienced, hands down. Playing the game with a proper wheel setup really brings out the characteristics of the game. And with over 600 kilometers of asphalt, snow, dirt and mud across 18 different locations around the globe, it's definitely an entertaining experience. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. We're all right. Five left, slowing. Thirty. Heavy right. Keep in. And three right. And three left. Very long. Thirty. Four in short. To five left. To five right. To five left short. Eighty. And six left. Forty. Three left. Tightens. It's all right in short. And slight left. To four right. Fifty. Late hip in left. We're in a bit of a roll now. Caution. Six right. Tightens. And slight left. Three hundred. Whoa! <laughs> this is absolutely Slowly. mad. One right. Half long. Long. Ninety. 
Five left, don't cut, and five right, keep in 120. Break, left of a crest, to keep in. And right of a crest, 70, crest, to slide left, it's don't got cut, absolutely and right short. And for a rally slide car, which are known rest, for having 90. really short gear range. Break, slide left, 60, absolutely five rapid. right, 30, three left, half long, and crest, 40. <laughs> And across right the line, to stop. Uh, the maybe slightly controversial. <laughs> Driving the GR Yaris then was eventful. Really good fun though, and as I said, just scratch the surface of what this game can do. The builder aspect, I can imagine I could spend hours building my own car and then trying to keep it out of the ditch, but yeah, mega fun. A big thank you to EA Sports WRC for sponsoring today's video. Check out the game using the links in the description if you want to learn more and try it out for yourself. But I think it's time to return back to real life to catch up with Chris to check out his car and see what it's like. Okay, we're joined now with Chris, the owner of the car. Mate, this has been a long time coming, hasn't it really? It has. Was it two years or so? I think yeah, we first a little bit. Like yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's changed a lot since I first saw the car, obviously, off camera. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. As I said in the intro, you physically cannot stop modifying this thing. No, it's become an addiction <laughs> at this point. Um, <laughs> it's funny considering when I first got it, it was like lowering springs, wheels, split a kit, the usual. Yeah. Never thought I'd go this far with it, but it's not even the fact it's gone this far now. It's the different phases it's been through to get to this point too yeah and so we've done the show car stuff now doing yeah. the track car stuff it's it's been an adventure yeah no it looks absolutely awesome um, i'm not really sure where to start really in terms of the walk around and the things that you have done to it but i presume the important bits in terms of the sequential needs some air time really yeah that's the that's the elephant in the room so recently I had a couple of incidents with the car my oem gearbox failed so I reached out to x shift who are based out in chechia um and they've worked with me for next season for getting a sequential gearbox in the car. Mm -hmm. So it's a seven speed, 1251 ratio gearbox, um, made up with an organic extreme clutch to the engine. The ratios, they're a bit shorter than stock as well. Mm -hmm. So the final drive on this gets the VMAX at the rev limiter down to 245 kph instead of the OEM's about 270. Okay. So yeah. not only is it shorter gears, like with having seven of them, the mm -hmm. entire ratio is shorter too. So mm -hmm. in total, it's obviously taken the Nord to 62 down from four and a half down to three and a half seconds now. It's been wow. a massive difference. That's huge. Very cool. Um, and obviously turbo alongside that, just had yep. a hybrid turbo on it as well. So turbos, it's a hybrid made by TDI turbos. Um, it's a new spec that they've come out with, which is, this is the first one on this car, which mm -hmm. they'll also be selling directly now to anybody that wants one as well. Taken the OEM turbo, um, obviously reamed out the housings. They've used their own compressor spec, uh, point milled compressor blade, and a different turbine as well, and a WRC ball bearing core. The thing will flow somewhere between a G25, 550, and a 660. Yep. So it's around about 400 brake that it's running on the turbo. Awesome. Um, it's a nice kind of plug and play upgrade for people, but yep. also we've switched to a pressure actuator as well, because the vacuum actuator on the OEM turbo I found was blowing open under high exhaust manifold pressure. Mm -hmm. So by switching to pressure, we've now got better boost control at the top end too, oh, which is okay. helping to keep a bit of power. Nice. And the engine itself is just stock internally? Not internally, yeah. So it's, it's not been opened yet. Um, done yep. the Kelford valve springs, which is probably the first things that I recommend anybody does with one of these if they want any more power. Yeah. Um, we saw a lot of kind of early failures of cars where they were uh, dropping valves. So when Acme, the guys that have mapped the car, um, they've limited the torque to around about 550 newton meters. Yeah. That's what they reckon is about the safe limit for the internals of that. Okay. Um, I don't want to push any higher than that, purely because they say the risk of that then in the cost of forging too. Um, yeah, I wouldn't true. see the benefits to squeeze an extra 20 or 30 brake out of it. Yeah, that's true. You're not really going to feel it, I suppose, really. Um, in terms of any other performance stuff, just the usual kind of air intake. Oh, actually, no, Cyvex. You've got Cyvex on there. Yeah, so Cyvex yeah. plug and play ECU. Um, Cyvex ECU, which Fensport installed for us, that's been on it for about a year and a half now. Yep. We've also got a lot of AirTech bolt on goodies as well. So yep. um, we've got stage three intercooler, stage three oil cooler, uh, big bore intercooler pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got my own intake, which I've made, which is carbon fiber nice. with the Ram air filter on the end. And then yep. the AirTech big boost hoses and stuff too. GPF moves, three inch center exit, single pipe uh, all mm -hmm. the way back. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot has been tweaked, but a lot of it's kind of the bolt-on catalog from AirTech, which would be yeah. massive help getting this built as well. But yeah, I mean, visually as well, it looks incredible. <laughs> yeah, so this, I think this is my favorite look. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. Yeah. Um, I'd seen, there's a couple of guys who've done the sort of Toyota Gazoo racing livery, mm. and I always liked it, but I don't know for all the different wraps that I've done why I never did it myself. Yeah. But now that I have, I think it's my favorite kind of look for the car. Yeah, it does look really cool with the white wheels as well. Yeah, aye. I mean, talking about the wheels actually, these are, didn't you commission these? They're like custom yeah, ones. Yeah, so these are made West by Westforge. Forge. Yep. Um, they have a, a bespoke design program where you can come to them with ideas of what you want from a wheel mm -hmm. and they'll then bring that into life. So the Forge wheels, cool. the CNC from whatever designs, they'll uh, mock up models for you. Yeah. So I came to them with a couple of inspirations. I had the Rotoform KB1s before them. 
obviously with the kind of rings around the outside. Same as the 1552 Turbo Max as well. Yeah. Um, the five spoke design was similar to the Bowler B10s and mm -hmm. the 1552 Tarmax, I think they were. Yeah. Uh, tried to mesh them all together. I said, here's a load of pictures of stuff that I like. They came back with a model yeah. and then a couple of revisions later. Yeah. So that was the, the first set they ever made for them. Yeah. That's now in their catalog under the name Nix, N-I-X. Mm -hmm. um, there's one other set that I know of in the world, which is on a GR Corolla in the States. Nice. Um, but yeah, cool. no, these were completely bespoke, bespoke to my own design. So this is stuff that I've started. Uh, I went self-employed in end of September, start of October. Uh, I'm now working with carbon skinning, which is a process where we put real carbon over original parts. Yep. So these are carbon skinned purely for aesthetics. Honestly, the panels are aluminium anyway. So weight wise, it wouldn't make too much difference to make full carbon ones. I just preferred the aesthetic of them. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got the wings, bonnet, mirrors, some interior bits and pieces have been done as well. Yep. Canards down here too. And then the rear wing, love to say that was my handiwork, but no, that's that's beyond my skill set. That is incredible, but that. That's uh, it's beautiful. It's, it was one of those grail pieces for me. Um, yeah. The car was designed, obviously, to when it was homologated, it was designed for that kind of wing to be on the back. Obviously, before they changed the rules and went to the tubular chassis. Yeah. This wing was built by Scara 73 in Italy. Um, it was, I say, a grail purchase. It was a lot of money, but I happened to have a tax rebate up here that happened to be the same amount of money <laughs> as the price of the wing. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know what? You can earn money again. It's yeah. um, decided to add it to the car. For me, it completes it. I know a lot of people don't like the wings being too big, but. Personally, I think the car was built for a wing like that on the back, so it just yeah. kind of makes sense. The same as you get Evos and Scoobies that have the big wings on True, the back too. True, yeah. Like for and me, it, that just works. It fits with the aesthetic of the car, doesn't it? Yeah. Diffuser delete as well. Yeah, so that was, I mean, I kind of like having explosive mechanicals. Yeah. There was supposed to be a diffuser getting built, and you can see where it's trimmed around the exhaust as well. Like there was mm. a different exhaust than that at 1.2. It was really tight up to the bumper, and I was going to build a big diffuser that scooped all the way under the diff and out mm. the back. Life got in the way. <laughs> I've not, not finished that yet, but at the same time, I like seeing exposed diffs and drive shafts and things too. I think it's quite yeah, cool. Yeah, no, very cool. Uh, especially when you see it moving, there's just things spinning as it's going yeah, down the road. Absolutely. These are something which I think it should have had from factory. The vents? Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're my handiwork as well. Um, they were, I did have the Tom's vents, which were a common upgrade for a lot of people. A lot of people say without the vents in the back, the bumpers a bit too plain yeah. um, they're kind of missing something tom's vents is the common upgrade um i lost one of mine on track at silverstone at jackfest this year so i decided to build my own uh these ones were designed by me 3d scanned modeled then outsourced to a company in italy to go and make out of a certain kind of material yeah uh, and added to the car and it just helps with the kind of parachute effect at the back yeah they're not true. massively effective but there is a bit of airflow coming out yeah. um which will help to reduce the drag at the back end yeah, but they do they just look like they belong for me yeah no i agree i agree but I think we need to peek inside because in here, of course, it's not standard either. It looks really cool in here. The seats, it's the wheel. Fun place to everything. be, yeah. So talking about the wheel, that again is your handiwork? I yeah, think? that's yeah. Um, I reverse engineered the OEM steering wheel because there are parts on the market where if you swap to a racing wheel and like with a quick release boss and everything too, mm. you can take the buttons from the OEM steering wheel and place them into like these 3D printed cowlings. Don't mean you still have the buttons, but they don't look particularly great. And they're a lot of money for what they are as well. I think Works Bell charge about £230 for a 3D printed part, which yeah. seemed a lot of money. So I reverse engineered the OEM controls and then I got in touch with Carbon Cut UK, who do some of my kind of outsourced carbon work. They CNC machined my designer plate for the front. I've mm -hmm. done all the wiring, the buttons, and everything too. Yeah. Um, that's the early prototype, and that's designed for the Cybex because there's like a, a map switching button and things on it, which cool. you won't get on a standard car. Yeah. I'm onto a version three now of these for people which I've sold. I think I've sold about 20 of them so far. Wow. Um, so they're going out the door quite well too. And we even yeah. got like Johnny Haltonen, um, who's the WRC champion, the co-driver. He's asked for one for his recce car as well. <laughs> so uh, they're doing quite well. I yeah. say they've become quite a big seller for me. Mega. And of course, the sequential shifter as well. Yep. Hidden away behind the wheel down there. In carbon, of course. Of course. Of course, had to be done. And then probably the final thing is the seats. Let me check these out. Yeah, these are Cobra Evolution GTs. Um, Worked with Cobra on these because I wanted to go and compete next year. I did have a set of recliners in the car and yeah. um, obviously needed homologated seats. Yeah. So I spoke to the guys at Cobra. Um, they've done these with my own, obviously, company logo engraved into the back of them or mm -hmm. embroidered into the back of them um, with a pinstripe as well. Um, these seats are fantastic. They're so supportive. They're so mm. deep. It's made daily driving a bit of a hassle. I'm not going to lie. I've had to add the quick release to the steering wheel just to get in and out of the car. <laughs> I'm quite a, a portly chap these days as well. So mobility is a bit more of an issue getting in and out. But um, yeah, the great receipts. Absolutely yeah. love them. I just need to get the caging in the harnesses. So that's um, that's next, is it? Yeah, so I was going to say, if you're doing shout outs and stuff, then anybody wants to help me get a cage in the car, then uh, let me know. I need oh, a half cage go. for next season. But yeah, Complete that's it. The car. Cage and harnesses, <laughs> and then I think I'm good to go. Yeah. But mate, no, this it's so cool to get this on camera and film it at last because, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I'd say, the most 
famous one in the UK, I would say. Oh, do you know what? I'm, yeah, I don't like using terms like that. I know it's well known. It's clearly yeah. well known. Like the Instagram page has taken off over the last 18 months as well, mm. which is great. Like it's been really fun going along the journey and having people come along with us. But for me, it's just a car. I want to get out and drive it and enjoy yeah. it and just live my best life. Um, the fact that people seem to be appreciating that and the fact that obviously you've had people asking me to get it on the yeah. channel as well which yeah, true. is cool. Um, but I'm just enjoying it, man. You know, that's the main thing. Not in it for the fame, I'm in it to just go out and drive and enjoy yeah. myself and live yeah. my best life. And that's the main thing. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Pretty uh, thorough walk around. But yeah, I mean, it is, it's worthy of it because it's had so much done to it. So that is pretty much everything. I think we'll hop in and, uh, and go have some fun. So this is my first time in a sequential. That is... That is amazing. Yeah, it's so much fun. Oh so much my fun. god. <laughs> well, well, I honestly think with, like, the extra power has helped, but I think the sequential's made a bigger difference to how quick it is on the road. Yeah. Like, you've gone for using the race box, my gear shifts for about three tenths of a second or so with the yeah. CAE shifter. With this, it's down to about 50 milliseconds. Like when you look at your dragging graphs and stuff, you can't even see the gear changes, it's just constant acceleration. This genuinely is a rally car for the road. Like even in its stock form, it's a homologation special, isn't it? Really, of the modern yeah. day. And I feel like these things, they fight way above their weight. Yeah. They. I mean, the great level with these things is basically traction. I use something Crail Raceway up there where I stay up in Scotland. Um, the service is pretty terrible. Everyone knows it's terrible. You can only really compare Crail with Crail. You can't compare it with Santa Mod. You can't compare it with any other prep tracks. Yeah. Because the service is so bad. However, that means that this is doing more mile times on par with this. There's an RS6 and M4. Yeah. Because my 60 foot time, my launch is so quick in this because of the grip it generates. Wow. It means that by the end, they might be doing 10 or 15 mile an hour more, but I'm already getting the track before they get there. Yeah, I see. So that's yeah. for the Yaris, that's where it kind of beats stuff. Um, yeah. Long straights and things, it's not the fastest car at the top end. Especially yeah. with a big wing on the back, I've lost about 10 or 15 mile an hour down the streets at Knockhill, which yeah. it is what it is, but the stability yeah. and the grip in the corner means it still sets really good times. Yeah, true. That's true. I mean, when I was driving what I'm going to describe as the virtual version of this car yeah. on some slightly stronger steroids, <laughs> <laughs> you had all those noises in the game. And I, I, like I said, I've never been in a car with a sequential before. It, you always think that the game is unrealistic in terms of the noises, but it's it's so not. Yeah, it's it's it, really it's visceral. It's exactly the same. Whole experience, and again, it's all right. Performance is the main reason we get a sequential. But yeah. if you're into this kind of thing, the noises, the performance, and everything, just it feels special. It's the kind of car like I'm still using it daily. But yeah. every time I drive it, it's an occasion. Every yeah. time I drive it, I get that buzz of excitement. Yeah. And all right, it's a chore driving around town centres and stuff. But get yourself to a nice bit of back road. Oh, We've got yeah. blessed with some great roads up in Scotland, the yeah. west of Scotland, especially around Glencoe, Port William. 
Yeah. So amazing noise up there, and this car is just an animal. Oh, so much fun. Thank you. 